Hello and welcome to NPTEL MOOC on Applied Electromagnetics for Engineers. In this module, we will look at an intuitive picture of waveguides, waveguides of a different type. We have seen waveguides of metallic type that is you take two nice metal plates, put them parallel with each other forms what is called as a parallel plate waveguide or you take a metal and then make it into a hollow box either it is a circular box or a rectangular box then you obtain what is called as a rectangular waveguide. Okay? And what was the characteristic about these rectangular waveguides or the parallel plate waveguides was that we analyzed the propagation of the modes by assuming this multiple inter you know multiple reflection from one surface to the other surface. So, you had an incident mode or an electromagnetic wave hitting the top surface of the metal plate then depending on whether it was a TE mode or a TM mode there was a reflection down there of course both modes reflect but then the characteristics are slightly different. So, they would reflect then at the bottom plate again you have so there would be one more reflection right and what was happening to the direction which was perpendicular like this. So, if this is the direction of the wave gate coming towards you what was the nature of the field in between it was actually a standing wave right. So, you had a sin k x x sin k y y when you consider the two dimensional wave gates and so on. So, that was something that we explained using the multiple reflection model and it turns out that you can use the same model except that the details will change in order to understand propagation of modes through this planar optical waveguide. First of all what is the structure of a planar optical waveguide? Well, it will actually have a slab ok, you can think of a cement slab kind of a thing. So, you just take that slab and place it there ok. Usually you place that slab over what is called as a substrate. The substrate has a lower refractive index compared to the slab refractive index. On top of the slab you can either cover it or you can leave it open. Whatever you do the top surface area is called as a cover. Okay. So, you have a cover, you have a slab, slab is called as a film because it is kind of a small thin film out there and this is resting on a substrate. Okay. The confinement mechanism, the propagation mechanism of the modes in this planar optical waveguides is not really the you know the uh, vanishing of the electric fields at the at the metallic walls, but rather what is called as the total internal reflection. Okay. What is this total internal reflection? When you have an interface between a higher refractive index and a medium of lower refractive index, when you send light at a certain angle which is greater than the critical angle. If you send light at an angle less than the critical angle, it would just pass through only some amount of light would be reflected back. Okay. So, there is no propagation happening, right? the reflected component would might still go back, but you would have lost much of the energy in this transmission and you would lose much of the energy after a few reflections. Instead, if I start increasing the angle of incidence and at I, I come to a certain point where the angle is actually just greater than the critical angle, then what will happen? Then we know that when light goes from a higher refractive index material to the lower refractive index material, then the material will I mean the light will actually get reflected in back into the first material or the first medium and there will only be evanescent waves generated over here. The evanescent waves will actually attenuate as you move away from the surface in the manner of attenuation coefficient that we have calculated and they will propagate along the surface in the in you know in the form of an evanescent wave as we have seen right. And depending on whether it was a T E mode or a T M mode the wave as it incidents reflects back okay. with a total internal reflection the magnitude of reflection coefficient is the same, but the angle which it will pick up the phase angle upon reflection will be different. We have calculated this phase angle upon reflection for the T E case and that will play an important role over here. So, in the total internal reflection when I send light at an angle of some angle of incidence let us say theta. Okay, then there will be complete reflection of the light provided you are satisfying the condition that theta must be greater than the critical angle. And once this light gets reflected it would reach the other region or the lower boundary and if this angle theta is also the you know theta prime let us say, if this angle theta prime is also larger than the angle of critical angle then it would again be reflected back. Okay. So, this way you will see multiple reflections happening and the wave effectively propagates along the axis of the waveguide and this axis is what we call as the z axis. Okay. 
the film itself or the film itself is bounded by two surfaces one at x equal to 0 and the other at x equal to d ok. So, one at x equal to 0 and the other at x equal to d and in between you have this multiple bounces of the light and when light reflects back it will actually also accumulate an amount of reflection. So, if this is a T e mode then it will accumulate a phase upon reflection of phi T e, if it is the T m mode it will accumulate a phase of phi T m ok. So, this is pretty much the basic idea of this one, but let us dig a little deeper into this one. When we dig a little deeper we will also assume that N 3 is or the substrate and the cover have the same refractive index which we will denote by N 2. This is done just to simplify the formula there is no other reason why you should keep them to be the same. In fact, they are not the same most of the times, but if you keep them same then the equation that you write will be slightly simplified and that is the reason why we actually do that. Now, before we proceed further let us look at what other differences do we find from the metallic waveguide ok. We know that if I were to consider a metallic waveguide right. So, if I have a metallic waveguide let us say of the same distance maybe or maybe a different distance because the wave frequencies are different. So, let us say we have a compatible metallic waveguide of some d prime thickness right. So, you had this multiple reflection model as in here as well this was not total internal reflection this was simply reflection of a perfectly conducting material right. And if you examined the modes the shape of these modes how do they look like for example, in the T e 1 0 mode you had H z component along x it would have a cosine kind of a waveform right. So, the E y component was going as sin pi by a into x. So, for the T e 1 0 mode this is how the E y component was looking like right. The higher order modes obviously will be very similar, but they would be in the form of a full cycle of sin or multiple cycles of sinusoidal signals right. So, this was how the electric field was present and please note here that the field was completely 0. In contrast to that the modes of a dielectric waveguide unfortunately do not vanish outside ok. The modes so here if you see in the metallic waveguide there was no field, but in the case of a dielectric waveguide you will actually see that there will be considerable amount of field present at the outside. So, inside it might look that it is kind of similar to this sin pi x by a, but then outside the field actually extends. However, the amplitude of the field outside starts to reduce as you move away from the interface indicating attenuation of these waves ok. However, there is considerable of energy uh, outside and the reason why this happens is because on a dielectric to dielectric interface the boundary condition is that the tangential electric field component simply be continuous across the boundary it is not going to 0 between two dielectrics right. If it was a dielectric and metal the field was going completely to 0, but here it would not be going to 0. So, similarly you will have the higher order modes Maybe I did not draw it properly, but you should actually consider this is one complete cycle and then extending all the way. So, you will actually have modes which are either symmetric about the center of the film or you will have modes which are anti symmetric about the center of the film. So, accordingly you call them as symmetric and anti symmetric modes and be you know observe that the field outside of the film or outside of the waveguide will not be 0, they will extend in terms of non zero values outside as well ok. So, this is what the major difference between the two is. Now, let us carry forward this analysis of the waveguide in terms of those ray pictures that we have drawn right. So, we assume that light is incident from the lower interface and hits the interface from n 1 n 2 over here and we have chosen the angle of incidence theta to be greater than the critical angle ok. So, if it is greater than the critical angle then this entire light will be reflected back ok. Again the light will start to reflect right. So, the angle of reflection back here is theta and the angle of incidence onto this one is also theta. While the ray has you know traveled from the bottom x equal to 0 boundary to x equal to d boundary onto the top and got reflected there it also picked up a certain amount of phase. Since we are going to analyze the T e modes we keep the phi T e the phase upon reflection from the total internal reflection to be of the T e type ok not of the T m type but you can extend the analysis for T m case as well. Now, 
as the wave is incident and then comes back and the wave begins to propagate again right if you were to look at what happens to the face fronts right the locus of all the points which are actually at the common face point right so if you look at them the common face points if they have to interfere again or if they have to be consistent and then traveling again they have to interfere between the two or they have to have a face multiple of face of 2 pi amongst the two components right so because the face front here and the face front here if they are you know uh, different only by a factor of 2 pi or an integral multiple of that then the point here will be in phase with the point here and then this would continue the reflection process multiple reflection process okay so in performing this what kind of total phase change has happened please remember that the phase change that has happened would have happened along the direction as well as the transverse to the direction okay this is exactly same as the rectangular waveguide there also we looked at what was happening to the transverse component or the phase in the transverse direction so you had e power minus j k i z and you had e power minus j k r z or rather plus j k r z and k i component along z direction was some k i cos theta k z k r component along the z direction for the reflected was again k r cos theta and k i and k r are equal to each other right so in the same manner over here the transverse component which we can write like this so this is the transverse component right and if you look at from one of the angles the total phase difference that you are going to obtain for the wave that just begins to propagate again will be the transverse direction of propagation here along from x equal to 0 to d and then there would be a reflection with a total phase of phi t e here then it comes back there will be one more reflection of phi t e while it spends the same propagation distance right and this vertical line is clearly given by k 0 which is the free space uh, propagation constant k 0 given by 2 pi by lambda naught times the refractive index n 1 here and the angle of incidence or the cosine of the angle of incidence which is cos theta times d ok. So, this is the total phase that you are going to obtain from one jump from the bottom to the top and there will be one phase phi t e added while it starts to re re return. But since you are looking at only the phase difference even when the wave propagates from top to bottom it is only getting delayed further right it is not getting a minus 2k sin theta and therefore gets cancelled out it is only getting delayed further. So, which means this k 0 n 1 d cos theta appears again with the same sign and we take that into account by simply multiplying this one by 2. Similarly, the phase upon second reflection over here is also adding to the overall phase of 2 so therefore we change phi t e to twice phi t e and this should be equal to m 2 pi with m equal to 0 1 2 and so on ok indicating the number of integral multiples and each value of m then indicates a different mode that is propagating inside the optical waveguide ok. To proceed further I want to know what is the phase upon reflection phi t e and you can look at one of the lectures that we have put this expression up this was given by minus 2 tan inverse of sin square theta minus n 2 by n 1 whole square divided by cos theta ok. So, n 2 by n 1 whole square cos theta I think there is a square root of this one I suppose. So, you can find out what it is right. So, I believe there is a square root of this I forgot whether there is or not. But anyway you can find out the expression from the previous lecture ok. So, this is the total phase angle ok. So, which you are going to obtain and you can actually put this phase angle into this expression ok. Put that phase angle into that expression and then rearrange the equation. So, that you obtain tan of pi n 1 d divided by lambda 0 cos theta minus m pi by 2. So, I am just bringing some of this back into this one this should be equal to square root of sin square theta minus n 2 by n 1 whole square the entire thing divided by cos theta ok. So, this equation is important for us. So, let me put a box around the equation and this equation is also not very easy to solve because this equation is what is called as a transcendental equation ok. Not easy to solve analytically. So, there are two options one you can solve them graphically the other option is to actually solve it numerically ok. On a computer you will do it on a you know numerically 
but for a long time people did not have computers as easily as we had. So, people used a graphical approach in order to solve this particular equation. What they did is a very simple thing, you have two equations, right? On the left hand side you have one equation, on the right hand side you have one equation. When do you say that you have a solution? In those values when the left hand side is equal to the right hand side you have a solution. So, sketch the left hand side separately as a function of theta, sketch the right hand side separately as a function of theta, wherever they meet those are the solution points. And I would not go into the details, but if you do that sketch, if you actually sketch it out, you will see that as you change the angle theta, okay, the term on the right hand side starts to look something like this. So, this is the term which is sin square theta minus n 2 by n 1 whole square under root divided by cos theta, whereas the left hand side term must go as tan, right? So, it would go in this particular way and then it would come back here. So, it would see that, so these are all going all the way to infinity. So, these are all going to infinity, wherever they are meeting, wherever these two meet, that is a solution. So, the lowest one for which that happens will be when m equal to 0, then the next one will be m equal to 1, m equal to 2, m equal to 3 and so on. Okay? In contrast to a metallic waveguide, where for each mode you had a lower cutoff frequency, only when the frequency exceeded that particular cutoff frequency did that mode propagate. In this case, there is no such lower cutoff frequency. All modes will propagate at all frequencies. That is good, that is bad. It is bad because when multiple modes propagate, there is a chance that these modes interfere with each other, resulting in what is called as intermodal dispersion and which will further distort the the pulses. So, if you send in a nice rectangular pulse, the pulse will actually expand out, go above its or go beyond its original bit boundaries leading to dispersion and leading to lower data rate. Okay. But it can be avoided provided I can actually make it into a single mode condition. Okay. So, I can perform a single mode condition, I will come back to that one shortly. Before we go to that, uh, let us look at what is the cutoff wavelength. Okay, so, we want to understand what is the cutoff wavelength beyond which the uh, particular uh, waveguide will be uh, single mode. It is not that below this one the waveguide does not propagate, it will propagate only that beyond this cutoff wavelength that particular mode will be or the propagation will be single moded or multimoded. Alternatively, if I choose the value of theta such that you know I pick the value of theta at this point which is the vertical green line then this waveguide supports only two modes. Okay. It still supports propagation, there is no lower cutoff. For example, I can keep moving this green line back all the way over here, even here there is a solution because this curve would have you know would can you extend this curve and then this curve is actually meeting this particular point. Okay. So, you can actually see that there would always be some solution. And of course, you cannot really pull theta down all the way here because you have to keep this theta greater than the critical angle. Otherwise, the light would not even propagate through this one. right? So, you cannot pull this down as it is, but if, if you can come very close to this value. Okay? So, this is not allowed whereas, this is allowed. When you, when you do this one that is when you restrict theta to only this region, then there is only a single mode operation, okay? single mode operation over here. So, what is that critical angle or what is the angle at which I can try and make this one? Well, when you approach critical angle sin square theta approaches n 2 by n 1 whole square which clearly means that the right hand side should be equal to 0 right? and cos theta approaches 1 minus n 2 by n 1 whole square under root. Okay? So, when cos theta approaches this one the sin square theta approaching n 2 by n 1 whole square means that the right hand side of this term is actually equal to 0 and you can rewrite this equation. So, let us say this actually happens at some lambda equal to lambda c. So, that I can say tan of pi n 1 d by lambda c cos theta is 1 minus n 2 by n 1 whole square under root. Okay? This minus m pi by 2 must be equal to 0. Okay. So, if this is 0, then one possible solution is to make this angle itself equal to 0. Right? So, when I do that, what I obtain is pi n 1 d by lambda c 1 minus n 2 by n 1 whole square under root equal to m pi by 2. Okay? 
this determines the cutoff frequency for the mth mode. Okay. No matter whatever that is, there will always be one mode propagating below this cutoff wavelength. Okay. So, you have or above the cutoff wavelength. So, in terms of the frequency, you have F c equal to m c by 2 n 1 d square root of 1 minus n 2 by n 1 whole square. You can show that this is you know you can actually obtain this one by multiplying both sides of this equation by c and then cancelling pi on both sides and then rearranging the equation. So, c by lambda c will become f c and therefore, you can rearrange the equation. Okay. So, in difference with metallic waveguides, dielectric waveguide will always support at least one mode of propagation. So, no matter what the frequency f that is, there will always be one mode. If the frequency increases or the theta increases, then there will be multiple modes, but at least there will always be one mode carrying the data from it. Okay. In fact, single mode condition as I told you can be imposed if you select d and lambda 0 to be in the fashion. That is if you put theta of the angle of incidence to be less than pi by 2. right? So, then you are actually ensuring that this is a single mode condition. There will only be one branch of tan meeting the right hand side. right? So, when that happens you can impose this condition and that condition actually tells you that d by lambda naught should be less than 1 by 2 into square root of n 1 square minus n 2 square. This is precisely this equation earlier that you have seen here which I am just rearranging them. Okay. So, you have for the lowest fellow that I am actually trying to find out when this condition is satisfied okay, then for every lambda that is greater than lambda 0 the waveguide will be single moded. If lambda is less than this particular wavelength or the cutoff or the wavelength lambda 0 for which this condition holds then that waveguide will be multi moded. Okay. So, that is the difference between the case of a dielectric and a metallic waveguide. In fact, we normally do not discuss them in terms of these ratios of d by lambda. We introduce another parameter called as v number. Okay. This v number is given by 2 pi by lambda 0 d square root of n 1 square minus n 2 square where n 1 square minus n 2 square under square root is sometimes called as the numerical aperture. Okay. So, this n 1 square minus n 2 square under root is sometimes called as the numerical aperture or the sign of this one is sometimes called as a numerical aperture. There are two different uh, ways in which we normally define that do not worry about that. So, the condition that you have here can actually be rewritten after multiplying appropriately the condition can be written as v to be less than pi. So, as long as v is less than pi you have a single mode operation for every frequency that you have considered if v is less than pi it would be a single mode operation. In an integrated optical waveguide you adjust for the single mode operation as much as possible by adjusting the thickness of the waveguide or the film thickness if you adjust it you will be able to adjust to the single mode operation. Okay. Typically what happens in an integrated optical waveguide is that the index difference between the film and the cover or the substrate is usually much larger okay, which means V number is actually larger. So, you can actually make V you know go uh, if, if you do not control D then it is very easy that V might actually exceed pi and then you start getting multi mode operation for a given wavelength. right? So, if you want to avoid that one either you reduce the wave sorry either you increase the wavelength because increasing wavelength means V is actually decreasing V is inversely proportional to lambda. So, you increase the wavelength alternatively if you want over the design wavelength of operation to be single moded you actually reduce D the film thickness because V is directly proportional to D. In fact, the product of D and n 1 square minus n 2 square under root the numerical aperture uh, more or less determines what is whether your waveguide is single moded or multi moded because lambda or the range of lambda over which this need to work is usually fixed. Okay. All the analysis that we have carried out including the cutoff frequencies for T e case can be considered or can be re derived for the case of T m modes as well. Okay. You can uh, you know again find that T m modes will have a symmetric and an anti symmetric mode it would be essentially the same kind of expressions that you are going to obtain. The cutoff frequencies for T e and T m modes are the same although the actual propagation values will be slightly different. Okay. But the cutoff wavelengths are all the same cutoff frequencies for different values of m are also same. Okay. So, in the next module we will look at a more you know interesting uh, optical waveguide much more popular one called as the optical fiber. Thank you very much. Thank you.